How often do you walk into a store like Decathlon meaning to buy just that one item and end up being distracted by a dozen others? Hmm, these camping chairs look comfortable. Maybe these running shoes could get me back in shape. Backpack at only 390. Do I need this? What if I told you that Decathlon is designed to keep you wondering and exploring? And yes, ideally buying more? Store layouts are a powerful way to influence how shoppers like you and I navigate the aisles, how long we stay, and how much we buy. Most stores are strategically designed with an intention behind every aisle configuration and every product placement. And in the case of Decathlon, it starts right at the entrance. The first thing is customers walk in, they are greeted by one of our key champion spots. We want it to be fast for them to quickly get the products. We change depending on the seasonality. For now, it's like winter season, so our key champions, it's winter. Generally, our champion spot stays consistent across the country, but we do have some differences in certain locations depending on the demographic. So for example, Orchard, where there's a lot more gyms, a lot more yoga studios, the champion spots could be yoga. City Square Mall, where there's a lot more kids audience. So inline skates are something that we consider a champion spot. For Kaline, the champion spot is actually hiking. So if you walk into our store, you will be greeted by our hiking products. Now that you're through the doors, their next goal is to make you move deeper into the store. And as they gradually move into the central aisle, they are usually greeted by the end of the store, the wall. So at the wall itself, we usually put products that are destination-based. So I come to the store for the intention to buy a specific pot or goods. We know that the catchment around Kalang, heavy users of bicycles, cyclists. We have nice tracks around us. We put it at the end of the store because we want to draw customers to reach the end so they are able to explore everything else that's in between. In our Kalang store, when they stand at the front, they're able to see all the different spots that we have. These are the different spots that I can explore as I go down the journey. We try to keep our central aisles quite wide to make it very welcoming. Also for safety, we have kids, adults going around testing our products. As you move deeper into the store, you might find these signs especially striking. It to really first introduce the essential products that's required for the sport. So for example, to play football, the most essential product that we need is not exactly the socks, not the jersey, but the ball. We make sure that we first introduce the ball in football. Some may liken shopping at Decathlon to a trip to the playground because of these. One of our most unique selling points for Decathlon is our try a zone in the Kalang store. We have approximately more than 10 big experience areas. We have our swimming section, cycling experience zone, and inline or scooter experience zone. So customers are able to get onto a bike and cycle around. Or even, for example, running. You can actually wear the shoes and get some of our treadmill to test the shoe. So instead of waiting for someone to give you these information, we want to make sure that customers are able to make their own decisions. The strategic positioning of different spots also gently nudges customers like you to explore and cover more parts of the store. So we position our test zones strategically also. We try to make it like a zigzag. For example, they test the product in mountain. And then on the opposite side, you can test swimming. And then after, you can test our fitness. Walking around the store, you notice that these signs are found in almost every aisle. All our products are readily available to be tested on the spot. As much as possible, we try to remove boxes or packagings from our product so that customers are able to touch, try and feel our product. This may not just be for convenience sake. Studies show that customers who are able to feel items are willing to pay more than those who have not. This is called the endowment effect. Basically, we make an emotional connection with what we touch. We've seen some kids who develop a very strong emotions to the product that they are testing. So we have an example of a kid who tested his scooter and he was so happy because it was very stable for him and he insisted on getting that particular scooter that he was holding on. But it's a test product and we told the kid, you're able to get a brand new that's exactly the same. But he was very adamant about getting that particular test scooter. This emotional connection may linger, 
even if you choose to leave the store empty-handed. We want them to spend some time to try the products, to keep the emotion in mind. Hey, this product was actually a really fun product for me to play. Maybe in the future when there's a need, I'll remember Decathlon and i come back to purchase it. Just when you think you're ready to check out. Wait a minute! Hmm, maybe grab a few of these on your way out? At the end of their journey, when they're going to check out, usually we have, we call it a golden wall, where it's selling some generic products that could be impulse-based. Things that I do not have an intention to buy. But when I see it, I start to think, hey, maybe I need this pair of socks. For example, where it's raining, we put umbrellas. Okay, so we've shown you the various tactics Decathlon uses to make you spend more time and money in its physical stores. Now that you know, would you do your shopping any differently? Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for On the Red Dot series You Think You Know But You Have No Idea. Meanwhile, check out CNA Insiders for more videos and remember to hit the subscribe button.